We'll join all of them together so we have all the data in one big map. Brian Boltner is leading his students through a few of the steps it'll take to turn hundreds of student surveys into a single map. We're really going to be able to see what routes are used the most. And that's going to be good evidence for how and where they can allocate funds for repairing stuff. This is Voltner's fourth year of teaching a class on Geographic Information Systems, or GIS. It's one of the electives that's part of Hoover High School's Information Technology Academy. We wanted to get a new career path uh, opportunity for the students, and uh, we had been hearing that GIS was a growing field. Joe Puncelon is already part of that growing field. Businesses can use it to find out where's the best place to, to fit their business. Um, GIS can do that for you. Um, spatial analysis, modeling, uh, transportation modeling, environmental modeling. It really takes uh, large data sets and compiles it to something that anybody can understand. And thankfully our, our uh, saviors over here, if we get, if we get stuck somewhere. Puncelon is at Hoover, helping students work through problems. But he isn't a volunteer. The student maps are part of a project called City Heights Urban Greening that his firm, KTUNA, is working on for the city of San Diego. What we're doing is improving the major corridors in City Heights in terms of um, stormwater treatment, bicycle and pedestrian facilities to essentially get more people walking and biking within City Heights. All those student surveys will help his firm compare the streets students use to walk and bike to school to those that get the most car traffic. Work like this is what brought senior Esmeralda Ibarra back to the GIS class for a second year. I like the projects we work on because we do not just projects that a teacher makes up, but they're actual projects that help the community. Voltner started looking for community groups the class could complete projects for a couple years ago. Well, I always wanted to get the students out of class and doing something that's authentic and getting them some real world experience. But uh, even more so than that, I wanted projects that would start to give them a sense of empowerment and help them begin developing their voice. Ibarra is one of the students who has taken that opportunity to speak up seriously. Last year I worked on two projects. One of them was with Casa Saludables. It was to advocate for people with housing issues. And then I also worked on another one where I presented to city council and that was to amend some laws for housing chickens, goats, and bees. Voltner has the students treat their community partners like clients. Along the way, we have check-ins with the client, and that's a way of assessment to make sure that the students are, first of all, meeting their needs, but along the way, they're also learning the content of the course. And Puncelon says they couldn't get better hands-on experience if they were working alongside GIS professionals. This data entry is what we do almost every day. So it's, a, it's, a, it's the beginning steps of the data process, data collection phase of almost any project. For senior Jimmy Rodriguez, showing off their final products that can help improve his community is the best part of the class. I just like it because I'm able to use my public speaking skills more and I like, I like to be a leader at times. And through this class I've learned like when I can't be a leader, I can lead from behind as well. Rodriguez wants to be an interior designer, not a GIS professional. But Voltner, the teacher, says preparing students to be successful in any future workplace is the real goal of courses like his. They have to learn how to set and meet deadlines, set and meet goals, um, organizational skills, as you've seen, data management is, a, is key. So there's a lot of that. Um, and working with adults, working in groups and teams, um, working for a supervisor, all of those kind of skills are going to help them no matter where they go. And research shows that classes like this one, that show students how their academic work is tied to the real world, improve student achievement and graduation rates. A week later, Rodriguez sees that connection close up and gets to put his public speaking skills to work when the class's finished maps are on display at a community forum. University, El Cajon, Orange, and Fairmont are the most traversed streets by students. So the next steps of this project are that we will be, we will be giving this information to KTUNA, and from there there will be a report that will, I think that will go to the city of San Diego and it will show the, the 12 or 10 narrowed down streets that will, are most likely to be fixed. He says he may not be old enough to vote yet, but he knows he has the power to shape his community. Kyla Calvert, KPBS News.